Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about my top five favorite VHF UHF handheld ham radios. I use these for a variety of situations and it can change based on my environment and time of year and or weather situation. Starting on the left we have the Kenwood THF6A. This particular radio is a tri-band radio. It transmits and receives on 2 meters, 1.25 meters, and 70 centimeters. And it does a full output power of 5 watts, 500 milliwatts, and 50 milliwatts on the lithium ion battery. The reason why I have this in my top five is that it has the unique capability of receiving on its B band a wide range of frequencies in different modes. Those modes are going to be USB, which is upper sideband, LSB, which is lower sideband, AM, CW, which is Morse code, and then we also have FM, FM narrow, and wide FM. And does a range of 500 kilohertz to 1800 kilohertz or 1.8 meg megahertz. And then from there, it does the AM broadcast stations as well, short wave, lower VHF, which is 30 megahertz up to 76 megahertz. And then from there, you have 76 to 108, and then from 108 all the way up to 1.3 gigahertz. And it does multiple modes throughout each band. So I use this radio as sort of a catch-all receiver. It's not as strong as a dedicated shortwave AM FM receiver radio. However, for its size, its ruggedness, which is mil-spec C, D, and E, meaning it's resistant to a very light rain and shock and dust and whatnot. It has a glow-in-the-dark full DTMF keypad, and it can do both receive on A and B VFOs on here, simultaneous receive, even on the same band. The B band, however, has a lot more wide reception than the A band. So it's a very small form factor. It does single sideband, which is fairly unique. It has an internal AM bar as well. So it's fairly flexible for its size, and the speaker is pretty decent. Let's go ahead and turn it on on the local FM station here. This is WHUD. And again, we're just using a dual band antenna on top of here. That's why it's in my top five. It does the best all around for its size and its ability to do a wide band receive, especially with single sideband added to it. Most handhelds in the ham radio world don't do sideband reception with this amount offered for its size and what it can do. Moving over, we have the Yesu VX-1R. This is a micro HT. And the reason why it makes my top five is that it's so small. It's one of the smallest HTs that I owned. And it is a dual band radio. It does two meters and 70 centimeters. At an output of 500 milliwatts on the battery for high and low, looking at about 50 milliwatts. Not the most impressive in terms of transceiving capabilities, but given its size, it's fairly decent, and it's one of the few radios in the market that is this size. The radio offers a decent wideband reception range of AM broadcast stations from around 500 kilohertz to, one, to 1800 kilohertz, and then it doesn't do short wave or low VHF, but it does go to 76 megahertz to 108 megahertz on FM, which is your broadcast stations. And then from there, it goes up to 999 megahertz minus the cellular band as well. So this, this radio does AM and FM. It does 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and is the smallest radio we have here. What I also like about it is that I have a DC to USB cable converter for this particular radio, and I can run it directly off of USB power without too much RF getting into the radio. That's very valuable to me in a monitoring situation if I'm out doors on a mountain or from an emergency situation this radio can be on indefinitely based on my usb power source and not the internal lithium battery on the radio it also can charge the internal battery as well so that makes this a very flexible powered radio for its size and what it can receive and transceive and it also has a glow-in-the-dark keypad it doesn't have a dtm 
DTMF keyboard, as you can see, but that's okay given its size. It's a compromise. And again, the power output is also a compromise. So I don't mind it with this particular radio. And again, I have an SMA to BNC connector on this one, and it's got the Diamond RH519 antenna on it as well. And that's why this makes my top five radios, the VX1R. Moving along in the center here, we have the VX3R. Now this is very similar to the VX1R, slightly bigger, but it has improved transmit powers. It does two meters and 70 centimeters. Two meter part does 1.5 watts on the battery, and the 70 centimeter does about one watt on high power with the battery. And I think they'd both do about 500 milliwatts on low for each band. Why I like this one, and it's in my top five, is that it has improved wideband reception in that it not only does AM and FM broadcast stations, but the short wave as well, and the lower VHF portion. That's 30 megahertz to 76 megahertz. And this goes up to 999 megahertz, just like the VX1R minus the cellular. It has a light-up keypad, and it has an AM bar antenna in it, just like the Kenwood THF6A. Let's go ahead and turn it on and listen to a radio station again. What I really like about this is that it has a earphone port out, which is a stereo type earphone port. These radios don't offer that. This is the only radio here on the table that does offer that. And it is a pleasurable listening experience, especially if you're at the airport or you're out and about in your day and you don't want your ears to get tired of a mono signal. This outputs in stereo. So if you're listening to an FM station like we were there, you can receive it in FM stereo with this radio, which makes this a nice pleasant radio to use as a listening radio. It's not as sensitive as, say, the Kenwood on shortwave reception, but for its size and the fact that it does stereo output, that's why I like it, and that's why it's in my top five. Moving over, we have the Yaesu VX7R. Now, this particular radio I've had for a couple of years now. I've been using these radios for almost a decade, and the reason why I've been using them for almost a decade and I highly recommend them, is that they are bomb-proof. And by that I mean this is IPX7 rated. It's very, very hard to break this radio. I've taken it on trails, doing trail work. I've taken it on mountain rescues. I've slammed it against rocks. I've dropped it. And it still functions and works perfectly with minor damage. Minor damage being to the dials at the top and obviously the big, huge pocket clip on the side here that, that I would say that's the weak point of the VX7R this this radio though is also a quad band reception transceiving radio and by that it transceives on 2 meter 70 centimeter 1.25 meter at 300 milliwatts and we have 6 meters both FM and AM AM at 1 watt and FM I think it's still full 5 watts or a little bit less the 2 meters, I think, is about 5 watts. The UHF side is like maybe 4.5 watt output. But it's still a quad band radio, and it works fairly well. I've used it on all six, or all four bands, rather, and it performs very well. It's a very strong, rugged radio. On the speaker here, it has a membrane, and on the microphone port, it also has a membrane. So it keeps the water out of the radio, and you can fully submerge this radio. What I also like about it is that the keypad is pretty tough. It's obviously fairly worn. As you can see, that's over the many years of use using this. The keypad is well lit in this particular model, and the LCD screen offers a wide variety of information. Let's turn it on and listen to the radio station here. What I like about this particular radio is, as you can see when I change the frequency to the memory recall section, is that you have an alphanumeric channel tag on it. So you can label your frequencies while seeing what frequency it is, and you get to see the channel number, and you can also program it to show the working voltage, which is very useful in my case for knowing when the battery is getting low, and I can switch it out. What I also like about this radio is that it's very rugged. I can beat it up and it will not break. 
and I also have a USB to DC plug up converter. It's a 12 volt up converter, which I can plug into this radio and charge it in the field off of USB power sources. Now that particular up converter does emit some RF, which does dampen the reception part in this radio, unfortunately. So I cannot have this radio on and running at the same time off of USB power, which is kind of a bummer. But at the same time, I can charge the lithium ion pack in here and get back to using this in the field, which makes this a very flexible radio to use in the field. It's my favorite daily EDC carry radio. I almost always have this radio on me whenever I go out, and that's why it's in my top five. Last but not least, we have the Yaesu FT1XD. This is a dual band radio. It does two meters and 70 centimeters, both at five watts and a variety of different power settings usually two and a half watts to one watt to 500 milliwatts, much like the VX7R. This radio does something fairly unique that the other radios do not do. This does digital and it also can transmit APRS signals out. APRS is called Automatic Report Packet Reporting System, which means basically, in a nutshell, I'll do it briefly and explain it briefly, is it sends a signal out to a tower, usually a repeater tower that's connected to the internet, or if it's not, it's a repeater type tower and it'll find another tower that is connected to the internet. It hits a node, and if the node's connected to the internet, it'll go out to the internet and report your GPS coordinates to a website. There's a website out there that captures this data and then shows it on a map, meaning somebody can locate you on any computer or phone that can ac have access to this map at that website and you can kind of see that it's fairly useful in emergency situations especially in search and rescue or uh, it just coordinating efforts in emergency situations so APRS is a very valuable and usable thing to have as a backup tool and another means of communicating now this particular radio can also do emails and in some cases text messages to phones but that's a little bit more complex and we won't get into that what I like about this radio in addition to that is that it can do digital C4 FM fusion that's kind of like a Yesu internal way of communicating amongst other Yesu branded radios that have the C4 FM capability meaning I don't have to just do analog signals like these other radios do I can do a fully digital signal that has a certain layer of privacy and I can send and transmit not only voice information but other digital information like such as my location via the GPS how far the distance is and even in some cases pictures with an additional accessory mic now what this radio also has is a wideband reception as well much like the VX7R and the VX3R and it also has an internal AM bar in it much like the VX3R and the Kenwood THF6A the internal AM bar increases the sensitivity and the reception range on the AM broadcast bands in this particular radio. It does short wave as well, fairly well in AM mode, and it also does the lower VHF portion as well in FM. It does not do sideband, unfortunately. It would have been nice to have sideband in this particular radio since it does so much of almost everything. The next radio that I can think of that's not on the table that I don't have is the Kenwood TH D74A. And now that thing does both a lot of things, including digital as well and APRS. But that's sort of like the Cadillac of the uh, HT world. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a sample here to show you, but this is the next best thing, in my opinion. And again, this is IPX5 rated, so it is fairly rugged. I brought, brought it on the trails, and I've used it on the trails, trail working, and in emergency situations. I have an FT1DR. That's the model before this. Same exact radio, just not an improved GPS receiver in it that I use on a rescue bag that I take with me while working. Let's go ahead and turn this on and see what it sounds like. Here's what AM sounds like. Not coming in as well, though. And again, this also has 
not only the information on the frequency, but a channel number for the memory bank and a alphanumeric tag as well. So it's fairly full of information on the LCD screen as well as a voltmeter for the battery and also time and the output and the type of mode that you're in. So that's another reason why this is in my top five is that it displays a wealth of information on the screen, has wideband capabilities, does APRS and digital modes, and is fairly strong at receiving broadcast stations as we've seen. And out of the bunch here on the table, it has the best speaker. I don't know what they did with this particular model, but they did a good job on implementing the speaker system. So these are some of my radios that I consider my top five VHF UHF units. I do have some honorable mentions. That is the Radio Shack or the Realistic HTX202 monoband two meter antenna, uh, not antenna, radio. And uh, that, that is great for taking up on the mountains and uh, doing some what's on the air because it has pretty good intermod rejection. The other honorable mention is the Yesu VX8DR which is sort of a hybrid between the FT1D and the VX7R in the sense that it does quad band receiving. I don't have it here on the table. I have it in one of my packs, but I don't use it as much, so it didn't make the uh, top five cut. Basically, it's a VX7R with the capabilities of APRS minus the uh, digital mode. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.